Hi guys, welcome to the other team full review of this digital temperature controller. Yeah, the listing says it's a Wi-Fi digital temperature controller thermostat. Heating and cooling works with Alexa and Google Assistant, wireless remote control outlet for reptiles, homebrew, aquarium, greenhouse, terrarium, 10 amps, uh, which means about 1250 watts it's listed for around 45 dollars on amazon currently has pretty good reviews so i thought i'd give it a try i haven't been aware of that something like that exists and uh, yeah i think it's pretty interesting device so here's the box maybe we get even some more information already here that's the brand name here and we see already yeah here some uh, of the setup possible setup with the app and yeah we have google we have alexa we have some specs 10 amps yeah of course you can do a lot you cannot do everything but a lot with 1250 amps you can run small heating or small cooling definitely not everything some of the acs they need 2000 uh, watts or so or close to that so you have to be careful just make sure that it works for this thing here but in general we have a really interesting setting here we can run this just from the device itself we don't uh, have to use any kind of app or so but if we want we can run it with the app and have additional features and additional monitoring and we can also use google and alexa but we don't have to use that so you can buy this and start independent and when you need more features you can add these so here we have the main device uh, solid large buttons looks really sturdy we even get this hook to mount it somewhere and we have two of these three prong outlets yeah it also comes with a three prong thing so it's really good so you can use your grounded equipment here we have the temperature sensor and some information contact information from this company so from what i can see now they don't have a website so it can be really helpful if i'm showing you the full manual i think it's not too large the model is sop20 so i'm going to show you the full manual as always here to help you to make a better buy decision or if you have both used or you just lost the instructions so hopefully you can see everything just go to the highest resolution which is usually 1080p then put it on pause on every page so you should be able to read everything it's a little bit small printed here but i think you should be able to see most of it So yeah that's it uh, i'm definitely going to show you how to connect also to the app i'm going to show you how you can use this thing uh, but i'm probably not going to connect it to google or alexa this uh, is a uh, very individual sometimes or it's too much personal data there but it shouldn't be a problem as long as you have it connected already to the smart life app and uh, actually there's a good thing with the smart life app that's not a proprietary app it's an app which is used for a lot of other devices so i like this and i have already a lot of equipment there so it shouldn't be a problem to connect so i've been reading the instructions very quickly it was not too difficult so we can try that out now i'm connecting this and uh, yeah first time it was setting an alarm maybe it's coming back yeah i think this is just indicating that we had some power outage of course we also have to attach the temperature sensor and we have to just push here and then the alarm is gone by the way we can enable or disable the alarm anyway with long pressing the down button here and you will see that it's changing in the top right corner i can turn it on again with long pressing so you have just like the alarm uh, turned on or off 
I think it has nothing to do with the control itself, temperature control, heating or cooling. Then we have the setting of cores, that's the most important thing. We long press for a couple of seconds, then it starts blinking here. And we can start to set the high temperature which we want to allow. We just uh, adjust this here and with a short press here we go to the next digit. And so we can change everything here to the next digit and next digit and then it will cycle when we uh, press again it will cycle here and if we want to move to the low uh, temperature value we long press here and then we can do same thing here you can see we can also long press so you can see we have one digit we have also celsius and fahrenheit we can keep pushing it then it goes down fast and up also fast when we are finished it's the whole thing we long press again and we have then set the temperature so as soon as we have finished that of course it starts checking we have a current temperature of 80 and we have set the target temperature between 89 and 90 Fahrenheit so of course it's too cold and now it's going into heat mode by the way, you can see that here, hopefully, yeah, the uh, letters are a little bit small, but you can see the left one here is the cooling outlet and the uh, one on the right side is the heating outlet. So here I have my test set up. I have set the high temperature to 81 Fahrenheit, low temperature to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, so it should remain in between by the way don't just push the button to switch to celsius and back because it will change the temperature settings a little bit not much but because yeah there's no perfect conversion from fahrenheit to celsius it will have to adjust like the digits and then uh, adjust them back so it could change a little bit just leave it uh, where it is don't switch uh, just uh, back and forth so let's start uh, with this thing uh, first what we notice uh, already it is below the low temperature and it's not turning on the heating and that's something which is somehow described in the instructions it looks like it's not possible to keep the temperature in a very short range so there's a gap uh, in between this temperature it won't react or won't work and this is about two degrees celsius below the high temperature and two degrees celsius above the low temperature in fahrenheit it's about four degrees above the low temperature and four degrees fahrenheit below the uh, high temperature and you can see we are getting pretty close if we would drop any lower it probably will turn on so there's no like time delay or so if you think it's just a time delay no it's not it is described here unfortunately it's not very accurate they describe actually when it's uh, out of this uh, range it should start but it doesn't it just says it will stop uh, before it reaches this frame or this uh, range here and it looks uh, it's it's also same thing to turn on when it's in this range which i've been mentioning uh, then it's not doing anything it must be outside so there's no way you can really uh, have a really really uh, small range here it's not working unfortunately but i'm going to show you how this works in general uh, i have a glass of cold uh, water with ice yeah you shouldn't dive this too deep I, i'm not sure if this is really waterproof i guess but i wouldn't uh, put this too deep into water i just put this a little bit into cold water and now it's going down and you can hear the sound i mean we can turn off the sound and you can see it starts heating up and we also have the light here which means we have now 110 volts power from here so let's go up with the temperature here i'm heating this up with my hands it goes up pretty quickly and then it should turn off you can see this has a little bit of a delay it's not because of the outlet it's just from the transformer it has turned off we keep heating up this and at some point uh, there should be 
cooling turned on. Let's see when this happens. Yeah, at about 87, close to 88, it turned on. Yeah, that's the outlet for the cooling. You can see it's definitely working, but definitely also not working within a really narrow gap. When we cool it down again, it will stop. So it has already stopped. There's also here a little bit of a delay. Uh, again, it's from the transformer. It's not from the outlet. The outlet works pretty fast, but we have this gap here. So let's uh, connect it with the app and see what we get there. So let's now try to connect. We have to long press here to activate the Wi-Fi or to reset it. We have already this Wi-Fi icon here. You can see that and you can also see that I have already connected a lot to this Smart Life app. Here we have the plus in the new version up there. So I'm clicking here. We have the lighting and we have a socket Wi-Fi. I think that's the one here. And uh, yeah, we don't have a yellow blinking thing, but I just say, yeah, we have a bl blinking thing. Uh, let's assume that's the yellow thing. And now you have to go to the smartphone setting. I mean, real this thing here for the smartphone to make sure that you are connected to a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. I have one which is 2.4 and 5G and usually that has been working so it shouldn't be a problem if it doesn't work I would go to this dedicated 2.4G network so let's go back to the app so I have selected this thing here you could click on that if you want to change and then of course you have to enter the password of the router it's not the password from here it's the normal wi-fi router password which you're using for all the devices and i click on confirm here so let's see if we can connect it usually takes some time till it finds the device yeah it didn't take too long maybe 10 20 seconds or so it says yeah device added successfully we click on done new device firmware found yeah we can also update this if you want that i'm not doing that now but you can see we have same information as here and we have even more we get some charts of course it's new so we don't have any charts statistics about that but i heard uh, that we get a seven day chart uh, what has happened probably uh, how many times it's turned on and off and how the temperature was developing yeah we have even highest and the uh, lowest and here's some information about uh, controlling by alexa and google faq a lot of things here not going uh, to do that here also some settings cooling delay which is a really important thing this is really cool uh, that we can uh, add a cooling delay because this can uh, damage if we don't have this it could damage an ac you shouldn't turn off and turn on an ac within very really short time sometimes the ac have their protection but sometimes they don't have it and if you have this here that's a really nice thing if you can turn this on here i mean i'm not using that but you can see you can activate that and you can also activate the alarms for high and low and uh, do a temperature calibration and uh, other things here so i'm trying here again for the chart maybe now we have something yeah it's still too early but at least we can see there's a, now a 24 hour chart which would probably indicate uh, what's going on what the temperature has been and when it has been activated and when not so and you can pick a date you can go back to other days or so well, unfortunately i don't have anything but you can definitely see that you can control and uh, monitor this thing from here and also from google and alexa i don't really know at the moment what commands you have from google and alexa usually uh, it's not so much you can maybe set a temperature activate deactivate those things but uh, it looks like everything is good uh, straightforward the only complaint about this thing here at the moment is that it doesn't work for a very small or narrow uh, temperature setting so if you can accept 
maybe a temperature uh, variation of about 10 degrees Fahrenheit uh, or 5 degrees Celsius in total from top to low then this could be the thing for you and I'll put down the link to the Amazon listing down into the description so you can check it out or drive from there if you like it and I hope I've been able to help you a little bit with this video if you have any questions or comments just write to the comment section below and I'm always happy to talk about your things and if you like the video give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and watch and see you next time